the name, thereby also creating the corporate person and the denying the child any rights as an owner of real property. Canon 1294. Since 1933, when a child is born, the executors or administrators of the higher estate knowingly and willingly claim the baby, baby as chattel to the estate. The slave-baby contract is then created by honoring the ancient tradition of either having the ink impression of the feet of the baby onto the live birth record or a drop of its blood, as well as tricking the parents to signing the baby away through deceitful legal meanings of, on the live birth record. This live birth record, as a promissory note, is converted into a slave bond sold to the private reserve bank of the estate and then conveyed into a second and separate Sestic AV trust per child owned by the bank. Upon the promissory note now reaching maturity and the bank being unable to seize the slave child, a maritime lien is lawfully issued to salvage the lost property and it's itself monetized as currency issued in series against the Sestic AV trust. Kenan 1295. Since 1537 and the creation of the first Sestic Act, deriving its power from the papal bull of Roman cult leader Pope Paul III of the same year, whenever a child is baptized and a baptismal certificate is issued, the parents have knowingly or unknowingly gifted, granted, and conveyed the soul of the baby to a third Sestic AV trust owner by the Roman cult, who has held this valuable property in its vaults ever since. Since 1815, this third crown of the Roman cult and third Sestic AV trust representing ecclesiastical property has been managed by the Bar Association, representing the reconstituted Gala, responsible as grim reapers for reaping the souls. Canon 1296. Each Sestic AV Trust, created since 1933, represents one of the three crowns representing the three claims of property of the Roman cult, being real property, personal property, and ecclesiastical property, and a denial of any rights to men and women other than those chosen as loyal members of the society and as executors and administrators. Kenan 1297. The three Sestic AV trusts being the specific denial of rights of real property, personal property, and ecclesiastical property for most men and women corresponds exactly to the three forms of law available to the gala of the Bar Association Courts. The first form of law being corporate commercial law is effective because of the first Sestic AV trust. The second form of law being maritime and canon law is effective because of the second says the KV trust. The third form of law being Talmudic law is effective because of the third says the key trust of baptism. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of words there, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so when someone says uh, here's a silver bullet, go and set up an estate, a testamentary trust, never mentioning Sister KV, never mentioning. Just follow the instruction and you'll be fine. If I was the executives and administrators, I would let a few of those go through and then I would round up the rest. Why? Because there is no way that that silver bullet that I've seen addresses the second Sesta KV or the third Sesta KV or quite frankly even potentially demolishes the first Sesta KV because one is implying in using that a level of incompetence because you cannot ultimately do that until you have established competence and squashed all three Sesta KVs. I don't know how many times I've seen, since I've been doing this in recent time, remedies that send people down the wrong hole and even find that the first few people that do it 
get a free pass. It's a, it's a, it's a standard operating procedure. Let the first few look like they're winning, send thousands down the rabbit hole, and you've got business booming in torturing souls for the next 10 years. Competence is the only magic bullet. Competence of the law. And the only way to be competent with the law is to read the law and to read the positive law. So, Brian, thank you so much for reading that. Um, what I'd like to do now is, 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 is switch for the time that's available, the next 20 minutes, to talk in specific answers of specific problems uh, when one does reach a point of establishing at least basic competence with the law. Well, the first uh, thing, apart from reading this, that uh, you need to be on top of is letting the system know that you are no longer subject to that system of SESTA KV. And that's accomplished by Article 133, which you may have heard of, the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. Now, I'm not going to go reading through all the canons of Article 133 of the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll uh, on uh, positive law on one heaven. <clears throat> but I would like to make a few comments on this. The instruction on how to create it is clear. If you deviate from that, and I am aware where people say, what, you know, if they're part of a free man movement, one of the traditions of free man movements is this concept that it can't be a remedy or it can't be a relief uh, if it is so rigid that it doesn't permit uh, a deviation. <clears throat> That's kind of false logic, but it nonetheless is one of the things that gets pushed around there. If you read those canons and you read the canons on how to issue an ecclesiastical deed poll, you're not creating a divine trust. You're not creating a true trust. You're merely giving notice to the system in the appropriate manner, at the appropriate way, being on the reverse of their documents, uh, that you are a trustee of real property and that you are connected together. Your soul has not been sent off to Rome, contrary to the Bar Association. Your flesh is not locked in the vaults of the Federal Reserve. And your mind is very much here and the land uh, is still at your disposal. None of these things that they claim are true, as evidenced by the, the ecclesiastical deed poll. So the first part of, of, uh, of responding is to be competent in reading these. A immediate specific uh, relief that you can do is issue an ecclesiastical deed poll to the uh, reverse of any summons, demand, that they send you and there is relief in following through in making sure that your trust is registered whether it be uh, the establishment of a trust account bank account whether it be in the uh, ensuring that the, the trust is registered so that you can receive uh, the benefits that you're entitled to not coercive benefits not punitive benefits <clears throat> you have a choice it's not all or nothing. You see, the remedy of the estate idea that's promoting at the moment cuts you off. It doesn't give you the ability to distinguish between positive and punitive. It effectively puts you in a grey area. What you have here in establishing a, a superior trust environment is the ability to pick and choose and say, I choose to accept my beneficial entitlement of the higher estate, which has been denied but I refuse to accept the benefit of being thrown in one of your prisons. You have the choice here once you establish your standing. Once you establish your standing as holding real property, then the UCC and the property laws work for you. Once you establish your standing as being uh, uh, a free man or woman, a man or woman that cannot be uh, regarded as being bonded, uh, and that those SESTA KVs have been collapsed, then they can't treat you as a slave. And once you show through an ecclesiastical deed poll that the spirit uh, is the source of this 
as much as the flesh, then clearly you have a soul. Clearly. And that Talmudic law can do nothing to you. So I urge all of you, if you haven't already, to read that section and be on top of it. Um, now, <clears throat> in the few minutes I've got uh, available, and I'm sorry if, if uh, for those that are new on the call, it seems that I am talking so broadly, but I do urge you to read because if you, when you do, not if, but when you do, hopefully read, when you go through things like uh, Article 84, what is a trust? Article 85, what is a divine trust? You'll start to see that uh, there is very specific remedy there in front of you, very clearly in front of you uh, as to your problems. Now, in, in, the, in the 15 minutes left before we get into questions, I want to, I want to tackle three areas of immediate problems that people are facing. Um, that is uh, foreclosure, um, that is uh, taxes, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll deal with those two. Taxes and foreclosure is the two. So before we get into that, we need to uh, cover Article 101, uh, being mortgage. <clears throat> now, what is a mortgage? That's half the challenge, what is a mortgage? Because the way a mortgage is sold to you is not actually what it is. When you open up Article 101 on mortgage, you'll see the following definition at the top. Mortgage is a complex bundle of rights, encumbrances and transactions involving primarily a lease, lien and loan issued through a temporary testamentary trust known as, here we go, a Sesta KV trust under estate law. Well, the first component being a lease, which they tell you is that if you have a 25-year mortgage, you have a 25-year fixed lease. You never own that property, never. You have equitable title, which is a fixed lease. The lien is placed against the property and the loan is also uh, owed to the bank. Now, your landlord, when you set up a 25-year lease, is not the county or the province or state, it is the bank. That's the creation of the SESTA KV. What happens, and what they don't tell you, is that when you create, when you go in and obtain a mortgage, the title of the property is conveyed to the bank. And you become the tenant of the bank. Your landlord is the bank. Okay, well, if the landlord's the bank, what is the rent? The interest is the rent. <laughs> it's the interest that you have to pay for your lease and the principal is the loan. Now, it's one thing to expose a bank for the fraud of which they have clearly uh, defrauded because most people, most people, it would be a shock to them to realise that A, the bank is the, is the landlord and, and B, they're in a fixed term lease. But the issue at hand is making sure that you pay the rent. The principal is something totally different. And you can tackle the issue of the principal uh, when you understand more and have read this more about what the fraud uh, is that has been done against you. So I won't go through any more of these canons because of time, but I truly urge you to, to read what is hopefully an eye-opener to you into what exactly is going on with a mortgage. Now, foreclosure. There's a huge amount of information out there on foreclosures, and unfortunately a lot of it is, uh, is misleading. But let's look at Article 108 on foreclosure. And in 1374... A foreclosure is a formal hearing relating to a standard mortgage requested by a financial institution or interested party to deprive a tenant of their right of redemption, also known as equity of redemption, and therefore terminate their tenancy without legal recourse. Well, what do we mean here? 
It is a fundamental principle beyond common law to the very essence 